Hey, what's up out there, everybody? I hope you're all fantastic. Today, I have another episode of my top 100 action movies from the 1990s. If you missed the first two episodes, I will leave them linked in this video for you guys to check out later. Today, I'm diving into movies number 80 through 71, a collection of films featuring some of the biggest names in action during the era, and 10 movies with a wide variety of themes that are all snuggled nicely inside the action genre. So let's get into the list. Coming in at number 80 is a forgotten action flick with hilarious waves of comedy as stars Michael J. Fox as Hollywood's most spoiled movie star and James Woods as New York's angriest cop. And the only way these two are going to get along is The Hard Way from 1991, directed by John Batham. I think this movie definitely still holds up over the years because of the delightfully bristly chemistry between Fox and Woods. This story is well paced and I think able to effectively balance the humor with all the action as a killer called the party crasher strikes the big apple i think fox is humorous as this whiny actor coming out to new york to research for a role that will give his career some validity with james woods delivering a world-class performance as this uh, just burnt out detective that's perpetually enraged i think the script fills the story with just enough subplots and supporting cast with names like Annabella Sciorra and Luis Guzman and Stephen Lang and LL Cool J elevate their roles easily, I think. And with the practical stunt work, I think it all gives this movie a lasting visual appeal along with just, I would consider a vibrant finale that's more than satisfying. Moving along to number 79 is the first Arnold sighting on the list. In this one, he would play a U.S. Marshal deputy that can erase your past to protect your future. And that's what he would do in this adrenaline pumping thriller that's called Eraser from 1996, directed by Chuck Russell. Now, you could really consider this to be, I think, Arnold's last big box office hit that wasn't a Terminator movie or something from another franchise. And really, uh, despite the flashy technology on display and it's at the time cutting edge special effects this is a film that sort of came out maybe eight to ten years too late it has a very strong 80s progression and vibe to it then you get these bold splashes of digital effects that were typical of the mid to late 90s that hold up modestly well yet there is something fun and mindless about this movie arnold and vanessa williams are not that good together but i think james Kahn is an enthusiastic villain but i think what makes this movie fun overall is the action i think eraser gives arnold tons to do from taking out bad guys by hand to diving out of planes to shooting alligators to wielding these massive weapons commando style he's never not commanding the screen and that's what makes this movie hold up My number 78 pick is a French action thriller. It's American remake. Point of No Return has already been mentioned on this list. This original is written and directed by Luc Besson and features a new kind of lethal weapon. She has uh, no fear. She's sweet. She's loving and she kills in 1990s Nikita, also known as La Femme Nikita, starring Anne Perriot. Now, I think this movie delivers a riveting blend of psychological thriller and full out action romp as a woman is forced into training to be an assassin. I think the Period's performance is uh, perfect for this plot as she goes through really the ups and downs of the life that's thrown at her. She has a vulnerability to her during the softer, quieter moments of the movie. And as she evolves into this assassin, she really is able to showcase the needed range to believe her as being a viable killing machine. The story is able to provide more than enough intrigue. I think that really helps elevate the uneasiness and the tension of the gritty action. And Bassan directs the hell out of this movie. The action sequences are just shot with killer practical effects. It doesn't always go smoothly for this character. She's routinely forced to adapt to different situations. And I think that's what makes the movie much more engaging for you to root for this character, to succeed against these waves of enemies, which really results in an elegant violence that makes this movie sort of unique to its own. Next up at number 77 is certainly a forgotten military action thriller. The tagline was one shot, one kill, no exceptions. The movie is 1993 Sniper, directed by Luis Losa, starring Tom Berenger and Billy Zane as snipers behind enemy lines. To me, Sniper is one of those strong action films from the early 90s that just doesn't get mentioned as often as it should. It's admittedly a 
A familiar progression inside the world of these military themed mission movies, but the world of snipers, I think, is explored more than enough to add a unique layering to what I would otherwise be just a simple turn and burn action romp. It's not necessarily deep at all, but it is filled with suspense and it's a surprisingly effective psychological thriller at times, which I think does blend well with the emotionally charged performances from Behringer and Zane. A veteran sniper is uh, paired with this nsc agent to take out a south american politician and it is a thrilling ride the uh, jungle locations are immersive and the direction from losa is fantastic and i think sniper is a movie that can really keep you on the edge of your seat it has characters you can connect with and when the intensity ramps up the violence is plenty satisfying Coming up next at number 76 is an undermentioned action thriller with a gritty international setting starring Jean-Claude Van Damme as a man searching for the killer of a twin brother he never knew he had and the closer he gets to the truth, the closer he gets to the edge in 1996's Maximum Risk, directed by Ringo Lamb, co-starring Natasha Henstridge. This movie was a mild success towards the end of Van Damme's run and I think it gets a bad rap on paper. It's a pretty basic plot that feels like it was pulled from the 80s yes but on the other hand when you watch it i think there was much more to maximum risk ringo lamb's direction is very solid he uh, does the action extremely well with the practical focus the international locales give the plot an immersive and very gritty vibe that i think all works well i think uh, van Dam is toned down a bit here but he pals, pairs well with henstridge on this mission for answers you can tell van Dam's attempting to kind of bring a nuanced performance here which doesn't always work but but when the action is at full speed, it's a delight. I think Lamb frames the chase and fight sequences extremely well. And despite not being one of Van Damme's flashier flicks, Maximum Risk provides some of the more violent and complex fight choreography of his run during the 90s. Next up at number 75 is an iconic early 90s gem about an L.A. detective that was left for dead by hired assassins and he's waited seven years to even the score because this detective is hard to kill from 1990 starring Steven Seagal, William Sadler, and Kelly LeBrock. This was Seagal's second film, and he definitely delivered all you could hope for from an action star um, outside of running with any trace of masculinity, I guess. Uh, regardless of that, Hard to Kill remains a charming showcase of Seagal's skills in Aikido as he takes out dudes in a variety of just pleasantly and brutally violent ways. This essentially feels, again, like an 80s action movie uh, down to its just corny amnesia plot. But despite its hilarity, this is a sound action film. It delivers a buffet of just hyper violence endless waves of bravado and seagal dropping cheesy one-liners like he's a veteran in the genre plus with it being one of his earlier films he's his ego hadn't really yet hit the stratosphere so he gets to take a beating in this movie from the bad guys when needed which makes his turn at redemption that much more rewarding with william sadler providing this movie the truly slimy villain that it needed My number 74 film features one of the all-time action icons there ever has been and another hot up-and-comer in Hollywood at the time who would both star as professional hitmen from different generations that would face off in 1995's Assassins, directed by Richard Donner. Now, Stallone was sort of hit and miss at the box office during this portion of the 90s, and much like his performance in The Specialist the year before this one, he does feel a bit lifeless in this movie compared to his action icon status. He does certainly fit the needs of the film and i think with donner's direction there is a sleek polished vibe to this movie that makes it easily consumable i guess you could say it's really just a playfully violent game of cat and mouse between assassins from different generations but i think what makes this movie so much fun is the endlessly vibrant performance from antonio banderas who comes in and effortlessly steals this movie without banderas assassins would feel bland and a bit flat tonally however with his delivery of his mannerisms and his expressions and his just tone and his sadistic mischievousness it's really one of the better action movie villains of the 90s with this performance and i think stallone and banderas going to toe to toe throughout really gives assassins a thrilling and highly engaging pace that can easily lure you in when you sit down to watch it
Moving along to my number 73 film is a great little action flick centered on the most important man in the country aboard the surest plane technology can create that also happens to be filled with the most dangerous hijackers in the world when Harrison Ford would play the president in 1997's Air Force One, also starring Gary Oldman, Glenn Close, and William H. Macy. Now, is this movie simply a diehard retread on an airplane? Certainly. However, it goes through the motions of the contained action thriller formula with precision and the political angle with Ford as the president is certainly enough to heighten the stakes. Ford does go all in on this performance. He feels presidential, yet when the situation calls, he's more than capable as an action hero. I think Glenn Close and Dean Stockwell and William H. Macy all leave strong impressions on this movie, and Gary Oldman holds his own next to Ford in terms of gravitas as the villain. It's really just a quickly paced story that sticks to the basics and there's no denying that Air Force One is built on recycled elements but it can still easily engage you with a nicely crafted action sequences as Ford fights to save his family all while thousands of feet up in the air. have a gritty little action thriller for my number 72 movie if you have a secret he knows it if you have a weakness he exploits it and if you have anything good in your life he will destroy it that's why they call him the corruptor from 1999 starring chow yun fat and marky mark Wahlberg. Now, this is one of those movies that just has a seedy vibe to it that's really able to complement the subject matter extremely well. It's an escape into the criminal underworld of Chinatown with Chow Young Fat and Mark Wahlberg serving up an effective duo with their uneasy rapport. This was when uh, Hollywood was really making its push for Chow Young Fat as an action hero, and I think he more than delivered. This movie is filled with twists and turns and plenty of bold and eccentric characters and with a capable blend of tense action as well and i think Wahlberg is fine he doesn't necessarily command the screen or anything however chow young fat carries the charm the energy and the intrigue for both of them the corruptor is a cop thriller where there really aren't any good guys which i think does give the film a unique twist and when the bullets are flying and the Gritty violence is taking center stage. This is a movie that can keep you on the edge of your seat and invested in the two arcs of its lead characters. There's something dangerous in the air with my number 71 movie, a supercharged film filled with stunt work that would take crime to new heights. That film would be 1994's Drop Zone starring Wesley Snipes, Yancey Butler, and Gary Busey from director John Batham again. Now, I'll assume I like this movie more than most people. It's, yes, a traditional action thriller with a heist and a fuel of revenge at the core, but it's all nestled nicely into the world of skydiving to create a fun-filled ride with suspense and plenty of visually appealing action that's fueled by a lot of stunt work. I think Gary Busey is great as the eccentric villain. Snipes is strong as usual, front and center as the star. There's a charming summer atmosphere to this movie that I always enjoy. I really do appreciate the unique elements that it stitches onto this tried and true action formula. I think Snipes is more than charming as he's driven to find the killer of his brother and the inevitable clash with Busey and his gang is a fun buildup. I think Busey is not completely unhinged here, but he is close enough to fill this vibe of a maniacal villain. Snipes gets his time to drop it out and fight down with the bad guys and the practical effects and the vibrant musical scoring and drop zone make it a charismatic summer romp up in the skies. And that wraps up this collection of 10 films, guys, numbers 80 through 71. And what a list it was with names like Stallone and Van Damme and Schwarzenegger and Snipes and Seagal and so many more. All these movies are definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen them. And they're certainly worth revisiting, even if you have. Again, if you've missed the first two episodes in this series, I will link them down in the description below for you guys to check out and here on the end screen. Also, be on the lookout for episode four coming very soon, breaking down films numbers uh, 70 through 61. I'll see you guys then. And until then, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Shop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Live or war, you gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?